One, two. Come on and put your hands together. Let's sing. Just want to praise you. Come on. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. is in your program and is read responsibly. You are a leader and you can follow instructions. I will read the plain and together you will read the bold. The kind of people we are will be known by the kind of life we live. It is God's law of creation that we cannot produce a godly life if we have not given him our heart. But it is God's love for humankind that what we are can be changed, and that change will also be known by the kind of life we live. We trust in our Lord to cleanse us from within, that our lives may witness to our new nature. 
Amen, amen. Welcome, welcome to our work of, welcome experience. I encourage you to be able to tag and share, even if you're in the house, to tag and share and spread the word. We just, we never invite God, we just evoke God's presence in this place. Our evocation this morning, eternal God, whose law of creation has made sure that life produces its own kind, and that human, too, can only become that which we are in our heart. Rid our hearts of all uncleanliness and fill them with your love and kindness that we may live lives that make for a better community. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Come on, bless the name of the Lord this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to rejoice and lift up the name of Jesus. How many are glad to be here this morning? I know we're few in number, but if we open up our mouth and we begin to worship the name of the Lord and invite them in to take a seat and take rest with us this morning. It's a simple song that says, create in me a clean heart and purify me so that I may worship thee. How many worshipers do I have in the sanctuary? If you're a worshiper, begin to lift up your hands and begin to open up your mouth even now and begin to worship. God, we love you. God, we honor you this morning. Hallelujah. A clean heart and purify me, purify me, create in me a clean heart so I may worship thee.
Until I, until I, I will I die. wait on you. I will trust in you. I will wait on you. Come on, we'll trust in you. Everybody say, I will.
is here. And when God shows up, <laughs> there's healing in the house. There's generosity in the house. There's reconciliation in the house. There's abundance in the house. There's a praise in the house. Amen. Woo. Our morning scripture, we read by Trustee Sheila Dallas Williams, followed by a prayer by Deacon Victor Alvarez. The morning scripture from Psalms 24. I'll be reading from the New National Version. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world, all who live in it, for the founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a purse of heart. Who does not rust in the idol of a swear by a false god? They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God, their savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of the glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in the battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the king of glory. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God, thank you to God. And we want God to bless this house, to cover this entire congregation. Shall we raise our voices together and say, Bless this house. Bless this house. Keep us strong and healthy. Keep us safe and prosperous. Cover this entire congregation. Everybody in the house, come down from heaven, Lord, with your almighty power, Lord. Shower us with your favor, Lord, and bless, say bless, bless, oh bless, Lord bless, please bless this house. Good morning, Bethany family and Bethany nation. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Abba Father, creator of heaven and earth, is once again your sons and your daughter come before thee as humble as we know how. Just to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being such a merciful God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing your angel to watch over us while we slumber and slept. And thank you, Heavenly Father, that you see fit to touch us with the finger of love and to breathe the bread of life into our body and to wake us up in the right frame of mind to see a brand new Lord's Day that we will never see again. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for God all by yourself. Heavenly Father, this special day as we come before thee, your sons and daughters who give up their self, to serve you, to work for you, to do all that is required for you and you alone. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, that you chose us. And we promise, Lord, to do the best we can. We ask you this hour, Heavenly Father, to touch the shepherd of this flock, one Adolphus Carnes Lacey, in a special way, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Search his body. Remove anything you see is not fit for his body, for his mind, and his spirit. Fill him afresh with a fresh portion of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as he continues to lead your sons and your daughter to higher heights. Guide him and protect him. Cover his family, cover his wife and his children in a special way, Heavenly Father. Continue to keep the peace and love in their home, Heavenly Father. But Heavenly Father, do not stop there. 
Touch his assistant, one reverend, a fifth man, in a special way. Cover him in a special way. Walk with him and talk with him. Guide him, protect him. But Heavenly Father, continue to let your love touch all of the Bethany family. Oh, Heavenly Father, you know all of our needs. Touch our home. Bless our home. Bless our family. Bless our children, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to go in the highway and the byway. Bless this borough of Brooklyn, Heavenly Father. Touch your sons and daughters, Heavenly Father. Touch this nation, Heavenly Father, that they will come to realize that you and you alone are God who have all power in your hand. Yes. Heavenly Father, bless this service as we go forth, Heavenly Father. Give in your names all the praise and all the glory. Heavenly Father, we will continue to trust in you and to serve you to the fullest. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us remain standing for our hymn of praise this morning. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground indeed is sinking sand.
Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You are aware that on today is our officer and ministry leader installation uh, worship service, and that's who's worshiping with us. And uh, before we uh, stand and do our litany, we want to show a video that we were able to show in, in our church stewardship conference meeting on last Thursday, and it reflects the work of these ministries and these officers, and therefore we celebrate their accomplishments.
Let me tell you why I love her. Let me tell you why I love him. Because he first loved me. Praise God for remnant praise just to do that, certainly on the spot. I certainly also want, I don't mind, I believe thank you makes room for more. I want to blow up our social media and brand manager, Mr. Justin Nelson, did our video. He's in charge of Bethany Nation. He's, okay, he want me to call the roll. He sings in the praise team, remnant praise. He, he manages the Twitter account. He does the church bulletin. Come on. <laughs> Let's give it up for Justin. Amen. We certainly appreciate him and his effort to be able to undergird our ministries. I'm going to ask our ministry leaders if you would please stand. And then you, you should have a bulletin. Those leaders who are at home, you can download the bulletin that we prepare. Sometimes we just got one download, and that's mine. We trying to go green now. We trying to save some trees. So you can download our bulletin. Our bulletin is always available by Saturday at 12 noon. 12 noon, that bulletin is ready for you to download now. Dear friends, you have been called by God and chosen by the people of God for leadership in this church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts and calls you to work among us and for us. In love, we thank you for accepting your obligation and challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to God's people, and to our ministry in the world. Live a life in Christ and make God known in your witness and your work. Today we install, will you state your name? Will you use your outside voice? Amen, Adolphus Lacey. Do you this day acknowledge yourself a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? I do. Will you devote yourself to the service of God in the world? I do. Will you so live that will. you enable this church to be a people of love and peace? I will. Will you do I all will. in your power to be responsible to the task for which you have been chosen? I will. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your blessing upon these, your servants, who have been given ministries in your church. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly in your service. Keep before them the example of our Lord, who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let them share his ministry and consecration, that they may enter into his joy. Guide them in their work. Reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through them your purposes are accomplished. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And this is to the congregation. Dear friends, rejoice that God provides laborers for the vineyards. Will you do all you can to assist and encourage them in the responsibilities to which they have been called? Giving them your cooperation, your counsel, and your prayers. Will those in the sanctuary here say, we will? we will? Those who are in the online community, will you type, we will? You got to type it. You can't say it. You got to type it. In the chat room, you got to type it. Because we're not doing they this do. by ourselves. And as these leaders stand up 
as we see, if, if you're panning a, panning a group for me, if you're paying our leaders, and I want to let you know a church can never go higher than her leadership. So any failure that we have is in this room. Any success and greatness that we will achieve is because of those in this room. So I am delighted to partner with each of you as we seek to climb another level in God's kingdom, making a difference. Now watch this. We can't use that we ain't been through a pandemic before. We've been through it two years. Now watch us pivot in this pandemic and feel God, fulfill God's purposes. Give yourselves a hand. Give your service. You, may, you all, officers, you may be seated. Amen. Just a few announcements, and then we'll go. As I said before, our annual church conference took place on last Thursday. I will not reiterate our certain facts, but if you want those facts, all you have to do is get a snapshot by downloading the bulletin. Uh, me, and, me and Justin got a friendly wager that I think we can get 100 downloads. That's, that's what I'm trying to get, 100 downloads, because... Justin spent a lot of, Justin and Reverend Pittman spent a lot of time putting together this bulletin. And if it ain't download, then we don't need a bulletin. I can have them do something else. So, so download the bulletin. I'm telling you, it's there. It's there. It's, and they can put it in the chat. They, I know they put it already in the chat. Le, Elizabeth, I know you put it in the chat. And now, but you got to click on it. Don't let her put it in the chat. You got to click on it. And you can get that snapshot of our worship service. Also, our leaders, as we're here today worshiping, Tomorrow we go to work. Our leadership council meeting is tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, will not be long as we chart our course and direction on, on what we're going to do together as a team to fulfill God's purposes for us. Uh, civics is paused. Remember, civics is paused because uh, we're just trying to do a scheduling change with things. But we will resume our civics. There's a, there's a lot of things to be able to talk about. I mean, it's some good stuff. So just save it. Just save it or, talk, or find a way to bring it up in Bible study. Say amen. So, but, <laughs> but on this Tuesday, we, 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 we're participating in the black, we're a co-sponsor of the Black History Month panel discussion on creating generational wealth. And so I encourage you to be able to be in that to, to participate. Yeah, you got to learn how to pass on that wealth. And we got to teach the mindset. Some of us say, it's all mine. I'm going to spend all, every dime of it. No, we want to transfer wealth. That's what we want to do. Amen. Let's. Let's learn how to do that. And remembering your church in your wealth. I couldn't even get an amen in here. <laughs> I mean, you ain't going to be here. <laughs> it's called a, a, a bequest. It's, it's remembering your church in the wheel. Amen. It's, it's, you ought to be able to do that. That's how churches, that's called future planning. Amen. Deacon Norville Fagan, you're going to lead that group, right? <laughs> No, we certainly want to do that. We're thinking about our certainly future and what that certainly looks like uh, in that regard. We will have our Bible study. We continue. We're almost finished with 1 Samuel. We're ready to go to 2 Samuel. It is certainly a powerful and wonderful uh, discussion. I encourage you. You're never too late. You, you really are never too late to participate in our Bible study. That's the blessing that this pandemic has offered us is that we would, we're try, rehearsals are back in, in the building on Tuesday and Zoom. 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 Most of our activity throughout the week are still um, online, but except for Sundays as today and, and other Sundays that we designate, we'll come in this building. But one of, the, one of the great opportunities is just to see the breadth and depth of our Bible study. Our Bible study is just wonderfully attended. It, we're just trying to get that participation rate up. It, sorry to have 140 people in it, but having eight people talk, that just ain't fun. I mean, you know, so again, I want you to be able to come and study, to read, and, and be able to share. We won't, I'll, I'll find a way to make what you said sound like it made sense. You ain't got to worry about saying something wrong, like it's the wrong answer. Ask some people, I can fix any question, and I can fix yours. So I encourage you uh, to be able to do that. And then, as I said, a church cannot exceed its leadership, nor can a church exceed the power of prayer. More things are wrought by prayer than we can understand. Our prayer, our prayer ministry certainly needs you, and you need our prayers. And it's amazing, only till you get to the weakest point, now you want to go to, to prayer service when you need an operation, or prayer service when you need a job, or prayer service when, when, you, when, 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 when the car broke down, or something like that. But, but I dare you to try prayer as a first resort. First resort. And remember, there are individual things that we do. Remember, you can still get your devotional. The devotionals, you can come by the church and get them. 
Uh, but more importantly, if you get the Bethany app, you can download that devotional. You can download that devotional. The Bethany app should be coming your way in about two more weeks, I believe. The Bethany app, if you don't already have it. We, most of us have it, but for those who don't, in two weeks, you'll be able to have it, and then you can download everything that the church does, and it'll be right at the palm of your hand. But prayers are important, and so in prayer, we want to remember uh, Sister Verdi Taylor. She's a resident at Atrium Center in Brooks, in, in the Brooklyn. Uh, Sister Pat Fox, in the loss of her sister, Gladys Brown, her and Trustee Fox, our chair, are in New Orleans right now. Let's keep them in our prayers. Sister Mary Alice Ridley, in the loss of her brother, William Townsend, keep them in our prayers in that regard. And also, in the midst of the prayers, we also have sent out, uh, as we're celebrating um, the birth of a son, in terms of Cassius Rudolph, uh, where he will be installed in Willensboro, New Jersey, Saturday, February 26th at 11 a.m. Uh, we are doing the installation. And so, if right now, we, Reverend Pittman told me I only had three people signed up to be able to go. So we're not gonna hold that bus any longer. So if you're gonna go, remember it's $40, and you should have got this information in the newsletter. Somebody said, Pastor Lacey, you taking a whole lot of time with these announcements, because you don't read the newsletter. Everything that I said is in the newsletter. You can click on it and register it, but, but we are still going, but we're not gonna be responsible for your going if I don't have 26 people for that bus. And that's, our, uh, that's our agreement and our arrangement as we celebrate uh, caches. And then, as I had alluded, we were, we were scheduled to do two, two services this month with our one, two, three, four plan. God rearranged it, and we certainly accept it. This is our first services, which was for officers only. And then our second service will be Africa Day. Africa Day, we're asking you to come in your African attire. Uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, the son of this church, has agreed to be the celebrant. We actually wanted to make that our family and friends day. We believe, we thank God that these Omicron numbers are going down. We are very, very respectful of how we've been able to do this. We have not been a super spreader because we have been, we have not been a super spreader because we have been very, very disciplined. And so we, we really believe that we can come back in this church on this coming, uh, on Africa Day and, and, and great pageantry and great celebration. So please spread the word. We can even make it our family and friends that you can invite somebody. All this time, we've just been down here on the first row, the first floor. This church has an upper level. Amen. Amen. We, we can fill this place up and still social distance. Amen. Or physical distance. Because I don't need you to social distance to disconnect yourself um, from me in that regard. And then lastly, all these things are sustained by your giving. Sustained by your giving. Thank you for, again, a banner year of your contributions that you have been able to sow into this ministry, but we cannot do it alone without you. Again, you can give via push pay, via Givelify. You may mail in your contributions. The Bible asks the question, will a man rob God? It says, yet you have robbed me. I said, how have we robbed you? Jesus says, when you keep, the, I mean, Malachi says, when you keep the tithes and offering. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there might be meat in my house. And prove with me, says the God of heaven, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. I just can't, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's one thing to talk about what God can do for you. But it's another thing to talk about what God promised to do for you. Did, did y'all hear what I said? It's one thing to ask God to do something for you, but it's another thing to ask God to do what God promised to do. This is what his word says, that if we bring it, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing we won't have room enough to see. Let, let me give you the testimony. I said I was going to, I wanted you to be in the church, but we had our stewardship meeting, and before our stewardship meeting, uh, uh, we, we meet with the deacons and trustees, and one of the trustees asked, Pastor, I, I see that our giving has increased, but, but why has our benevolence and missionary work? And I said, because to whom much is given, much is required and expected. So as we continue to sow into this ministry, this ministry continues to sow into other ministries and other organizations because you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. So we'll hear from Remnant Praise. Pastor Lacey will come back for a few reflections, and then we'll go to this table. How about that? How about that?
just want to stop a minute and just say thank you, God, for being patient with us and for giving us another chance. I know a hallelujah goes there. Thank you, God, for being patient with us and for giving us another chance. If I can't get somebody, I can get a remnant praise to praise with me. And lift their hands and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And for being so faithful to us, we want to give us God back in return, our life and our love and our all. We dedicate ourselves to you. So here we go. My hands and soul. My hands were made, were made to worship, to worship you.
Amen. Amen. We praise God for those wonderful voices, for those Levites who have certainly prepared the way. And that's the theme for officers. As they give their life, they're all. And that's what we gather here to do, to surrender all. Our scripture this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew. chapter 5, verses 1 through 8 from the New International Version. And there you find these words. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for life and giving it to us abundantly. We thank you for this great aggregation of believers who have gathered here and in the cyberspace, in the virtual space, to be able to worship you with all of our hearts. So God, as we come to this foolishness of preaching, I ask that you would hide me behind your cross, that all of you and none of me may be seen and heard. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are continuing our sermon series the Beatitudes, Upside Down Blessings, Upside Down Blessings, taken from the introduction of the Lord's Sermon on, on the Mount, recorded in Matthew chapter 5, 5 through 7. And so, so the Beatitudes ask the question, what are the characteristics of a citizen in the kingdom of heaven? What, what, what are the characteristics? characteristics? You will be reminded that each Beatitude has a particular form. It's a statement of blessing, blessed. A description of the attitude, or the poor in spirit, and an outcome, 
because there's the kingdom of heaven. That, that follows that whole sing-song rhythm for them to be reminded themselves, to remind themselves of these blessings. Yet they are upside-down blessings. They are upside-down blessings because they do not make sense that if you pour, you gain entry, that if you mourn, you are comforted. If you, if, if, if you, if you meek, you inherit the earth. If you're hungry and thirsty, you're filled. And, 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 if, and if you're merciful, people will show you mercy. And ironically, in those things, we find them being sequential, meaning they come in a particular order. They build upon themselves. There can be no social promotion in the Beatitudes. <laughs> I dropped that on you. There can be no social promotion in the Beatitudes. Because many of us just want to talk about what about those who are persecuted? Well, you got to start with the poor in spirit and work your way down. And each time, it's, it, I, guess, I guess, Gary, we would call that compounding interest. That's what it is. It, it builds upon itself in here. And up sound, up, a, a, as upside down blessings. I can see this. I really can. I can see it makes sense of being poor and yet being provided for, mourning and yet being comforted, meek and yet inheriting, a, a hungry and yet being filled, mercy and showing mercy. I can see myself in each one of these. But then I had to do a hard stop as I prepared for this one. It says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Mm. I, 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 don't, I don't see myself in that, that category. I don't think anybody here will see themselves blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. We are reminded that Exodus 33, 20 tells us to God tells Moses, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. That, 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 that's where we got that song, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide. See, in other words, as God's glory was passing by, he says, son, you can't see me, but I got a little rock that I can hide you in, and you can just catch my backside. John chapter 1 verse 18 says, uh, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten who is the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. So now it is in the Old Testament and the New Testament that, that, that no, nobody can see God, and yet Jesus has the, uh, that, the unmitigated goal to say, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. February is Black History Month. Uh, we thank Carter G. Woodson for that. It started out as Black History Week. Thank you, Jennifer, on the open line, told us about Gerald Ford was the one who made it a month, but it started with uh, Carter G. Woodson being able to celebrate the accomplishments of what blacks have made uh, to these great yet to be united st states of America. So it's, it is Black History Month, but it's also Heart Awareness Month. Yeah, it's ha heart, heart disease is the leading cause of death in, 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 in America. 695,000 people die each year from heart disease. Did you hear what I just said? So, some of us just been so corona focused. Well, that's how we just, just, cor 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 hey, Corona. You know, that's all we've been on. Each time, just stuck on Corona, Corona, Corona. But 659,000 people die each year. That's one person every 36 seconds. There is no organ more critical to life than the heart. That's, and, and, and so it is not lost that God would therefore use the heart, which is essential for your life, your physical life. It's also essential for your spiritual life. As goes the heart, so does your life. And the same is true for our spiritual lives. So we got blessed are the pure in heart. Pure in Greek, it, it, it is, it is uh, uh, kateros. Kateros. It's where you get Catherine. Catherine, anybody that's Catherine, that's where it is. Or, or my friend Karen. It, 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 it's a derivative of, of, of Catherine. It, it means pure. Tell your husband that. It, it means unmingled. It means undefiled. Y'all know any Catherines or some Karens, some Kathys? Now, but that's, that's where that name is taken from. But that's what it means to be clean and unmingled, undiluted, unpolluted. And then heart, cardio. Y'all know where we get that word? Cardiac. 
cardiac. And, and so now you're talking about Kathros cardia, a pure heart. And, and it is used 105 times in the New Testament. And it means the center of who we really are. It is the epicenter of your being. That's why we're told to love the Lord God with what? All of our heart. That's it. It's all. See, see, God doesn't want half of you. God wants all of you. And then we know that God told Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You, 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 you don't know that scripture, but you know the story when Samuel was called to anoint the king of Israel, and when he went to go anoint the new king of Israel, he told Jesse, go bring your boys out. I wish I had Jesse's boys. He brought Jesse's boys out, and as Jesse's boys came out and prayed it, paraded themselves, each one stronger and more masculine. They look like Hakeem Olajuwon. I mean, them were some beautiful looking brothers, but none of them had the anointing. He said, do you got any more sons? He said, yeah, I got a son. He's a little guy. He's down there playing with the sheep, and David comes in smelling like outside. Come on, somebody. Comes in smelling like outside, got stuff all messed up in his hair, and then when Samuel sees him, Samuel says, that is the anointed of the Lord. What, what I'm trying to tell you we get dressed up for church we put our hats on for church put our shoes and squeeze in the stuff to go to church but God is not concerned about what you look like on the outside God is only concerned about your heart God speaks to us today about being pure in heart a heart that thinks what is right loves what is good and desires what is best that is what God wants from each one of us Three observations and we'll go to the table. First of all, the pure in heart are not complete. The pure in heart are not complete. Because that kind of scared me. It, it, it's not perfect. Because when you say pure, you, you're hearing this, this undefiled and unmingled. Uh, God, God is not saying that because we know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, that there are no perfect saints. I don't care who, I don't care how long, how old your grandma is. She ain't perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the pure in heart are not complete. In other words, they're not perfect. See, purity of our heart implies what God is going to do to our hearts, not necessarily the way our hearts are, because we learn in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, the Lord saw that every inclination of the thoughts of man's heart was evil at the time. Man. If you want a pure heart, and yet when you look at my heart, when I get my heart exam, you're able to see the evil things. What, what is he trying to say? What he's trying to say is that you can come up here and preach love and sing love and hate the person you're singing about or singing to. Come on, we know that you can smile in your face all the time trying to take your place. They're the backstabbers. Come on, so, but you, you, you see this in there because you can't see it because you're focusing only what we see. Even in this world, ivory soap still says that it is 99% pure because there are some imperfections in it. Some of you all love 24 karat gold, but 24 karat gold is 99.95%. That, that's what it is. And he talked about it. it's not a hundred percent gold. And, and let me let you know something about these United States of America. Gold can have as little as 41.7% gold and be called gold. Y'all don't want me to do therapy because my daddy used to sell that type of gold. So but in this regard, I want you to see this, is that purity is so hard to obtain. And so we can't obtain purity. Nobody guarantees anything 100% because there's always an exception. But God says, here it starts. When you look at Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 through 10, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. Oh, yeah, you didn't expect to hear that from this 
this progressive Baptist preacher about the wrath of God when you act up. Jesus says, if you think it in your heart, you did it. That's, that's the problem. I want to, just because you learn how to restrain, restrain yourself, and just because you learn how to smile and not yell back, it don't mean all the stuff that's going on in your head. Oh, well, if it was another day, if it wasn't a camera on, oh, I would take you. Come on, some, is it just me? Am I just doing therapy? We got to upgrade my insurance plan. We got to do something up in here. Because I'm the only, I'm the, am I the only one that had to wrestle with myself? Because see, some of y'all be having an angel here and a devil here. I got two devils here and two devils here. And the angels are afraid to show up. <laughs> But, but, but see, the God lets us know, and this, this is what I want us to know, and it kind of scares people away, is that the pure in heart is not about being perfect. That's what you got, that's what scares us, and that's how we get trapped when we try to be perfect. When you try to be per when you try to grasp perfection, it slips right out of your hand. That's, that's what happens. It's counterintuitive. It's kind of like golf. The harder you hold on to that ball and the harder you swing, the, the, the less far it goes. But when you hold it very, very loose and, and you just follow your instructions and just watch it go, it doesn't make sense. And that's what God is letting us know. Watch this. Here's the point. I'm going to blow your mind because I'm going to do an inclusio. Yeah, I know that's my second favorite word in the Bible. I mean, to describe the Bible, inclusio means bookends. The pure in heart are not complete, but yet we were made to see God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to write, write that down. The pure in heart are not complete, yet we were made to see God. And here we are seeing over and over what God is saying here. But look what Matthew says in Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 through 19. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this defiles a person, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. What they're saying is, and when they were dealing this conversation with those of us right now, and I know I'm not talking about anybody in particular, I'm not, so please don't read into this. But you got a whole lot of people, they start the year off with the Daniel fast. And what do they do? That's the big deal. We're fasting. We're fasting. We're fasting. We're fasting. We're fasting. And this is the aspect what Jesus was going up against, the aspect of them fasting, because they were so concerned about what they were putting in their body. But what he said is the worst thing is what comes out of your body, and it comes out of your heart. So if you want to fast something, fast from what comes out of your heart. These evil and deceitful things are in your heart, yet we were made to see God. Pure in heart are not complete, not perfect. The pure in heart are consistent in commitment. That's what it means to be, to be pure in heart. It means to be consistent in your commitment to one thing. That, that's what it is. See, watch this. Jeremiah says, so I, so I said, watch this. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and it defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. Yet, God has promised through the prophet Jeremiah, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And yet, he says, I will give them singleness of heart and action. So, so watch this. The, the heart is not only a place of thought and emotion. The heart is a place of action. It's, it's where you decide to be able to fight. See, let me tell you, sometimes uh, y'all know my team is out of the Super Bowl, you know, they, and, and the reason why they, they out of the Super Bowl because they didn't, they wasn't hungry no more. And what also what happened was they didn't have a fight. And then you don't have a fight, that means you didn't have a heart. And that's how many times we give up on things because we don't have the heart to fight for them, to wrestle for them, to struggle for them. See, to be pure in heart means that we are sincere and not double-minded. That we have unmixed motives as the basis of what we do. That's what God is saying. Again, God said, you can't love me in the world. So being pure in heart is to love God un unmingled, to love God undefiled, to love God undouble-minded. Sometimes we engage in worship, and while we're in worship, we're texting. So I'm talking about, I'm taking notes. No, you're not. God, no, it quit saying it. 
these cameras can zoom in on you. I can see everything you do now. <laughs> We're waiting to get facial recognition so we can start taking attendance. <laughs> okay, I'm joking because I don't want y'all to get, I ain't going to that church. He, yeah, I knew he was an informant working for the FBI. <laughs> But, but no, you, 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 you are consistent. And see, this consistent means that you are the same in private that you are in public. Some people, you don't never know they go to church if you see them in private. And some people that you just in church, you never think you see them at the club. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Why you look at me like that? <laughs> like, Pastor, quit talking about me. What's going on? All I'm saying is that he says, God wants you to be pure, is to be single-minded. And guess what? God has given you a heart to be single-minded. God has given you a heart to be able to focus on him, free from containments. In other words, God don't want you to be like this. First Kings, where they, he says, how long will you waver between positions? Either God is God or Baal is Baal. Remember what he said at the church at Laodicea. I spit you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. That's what he says. Because all he's saying is you're lukewarm because you ain't made up your mind. See, you can either be hot, hot water and be medicinal, or you can be cold water and be refreshing, but lukewarm ain't good for nothing. Do you want a friend that's wishy-washy? Do you want to do you want to have a boss that can pay you one week and can't pay you the next week? Do you want to have a wife or a husband that love you this week but don't love you next week, huh? Do you want to have a car that starts up today but not tomorrow? Do you want to have clothes that fit today but not tomorrow? Okay, I think we might have those. <laughs> we hate that fickleness, that wishy-washiness, and God says, "Focus on me." Yeah, remember Mary and Martha was arguing. Well, actually, it was Martha that was arguing because Mary was trying to impress Jesus with her collard greens and cornbread and black-eyed peas. Yes, she was. And told, told Jesus to tell Mary, get off her knees and hanging out with the guys and come in the kitchen and help me clean and help me do this. And he said, no, she has chose the best things. Martha, you concerned about too many things. You concerned about what people think about you. You concerned about the temperature. You concerned about your car. You concerned about your place in line. What you want to focus on is your relationship with God. That's what the pure in heart do. The pure in heart are single focused on God. Pure in heart are not complete. They're not perfect. The pure in heart are consistent in commitment of pursuing one thing, a relationship with God. And lastly, the pure in heart are compensated with comprehension. <laughs> I didn't love to say that, you know. Really what I'm saying is they're rewarded with one thing, seeing God. See, pure in heart, compensated. I mean, you get rewarded. What am I getting rewarded with? I'm getting rewarded with understanding, with comprehension. And the comprehension is, he says, blessed are the pure in heart. So blessed are those who focus on one thing, which is seeing God. And he says, guess what? You see him. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, pastor, didn't you do this stuff about Moses and all of that? I said, yes, I did. That's why the Bible has many stories to be able to say what does see mean. And we can see now, and we can see in the future. We do sing the song, oh, I want to see him look upon his face, dare to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, cares are past, home at Yeah, you can think about seeing him there, but, but there's, there, there's, there's, there's a book in the Bible called Job. And not jobs. Somebody was looking for jobs the other day. I said, that's not a classified thing. No, it's the book of Job. That's what, so in the book of Job, there you see the story of this man who said, I had the patience of Job. The book of Job is not about patience, and it's not about being returned anything. It's about piety. It's about doing what God says because God said it. That's what Job's about. Don't let nobody else tell you any other story. And what's happened is it took 42 chapters for Job to get that. You missed what I said. Job lost his wife, lost his children, lost his health. Uh, 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 he, his, wife, his wife just said she want to curse him. He ought to curse God and die. He's going through all of this stuff. But watch how Job 42 says this. Job 42 verse 5 says, My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. 
what I'm trying to tell you. You, you can be in church uh, all your life and sitting under the, the great preachers, uh, sitting under Adolphus Lacey, sitting under David Hampton, sitting under uh, Jasper E. Payton, sitting under William Augustus Jones, sitting under Bake. You can be sitting under Pastor Mariner. You can sit underneath all of these pastors and, and hear the great eloquent words and hear them raise the scripture. But I will tell you what, life will bring you to a point where you don't just hear about God, but you're able to see God uh, for yourself. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You, you know when that situation is, when death was right there, when defeat was right there, and God snatched defeat, uh, God snatched victory out of the mouth of defeat. That's what Job is talking about. He's talking about this comprehension of saying, oh, I see what you're saying. See, when you pursue God, you pursue the understanding of your purpose, and it gets the line to say, now I see why I'm here. Now I see why you did that. Now I see that that which did not destroy me has made me stronger. Now I see that you have brought me from a mighty long way, and you will never let me go. Now I see what you did before. You can do it again. Now I can see you. Beloved, God relentlessly pursues the heart, and desires us. It's almost, I'm getting in trouble for this, but I like trouble. It's what they say in Buddhism. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. <laughs> That's it. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So what I'm saying is, when you pursue God, when you, pursue God you will see him. <laughs> but you won't see him if you don't pursue him. <laughs> Somebody said, well, pastor, why can't I see? Because let me tell you, honey, because you're not pursuing. Pastor, why can't I see? Let me tell you, my brother, because you're not pursuing him. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. You can't go after God half-assed. You got to go after God with your whole heart. I will search for you. And I will find you with all of my heart. The pure in heart are not complete. They're not perfect. The pure in heart are consistent in commitment of pursuing one thing. The pure in heart are compensated with comprehension. In other words, they're rewarded with the one thing they're seeking. They're seeing God. And beloved, the thing about this, about me says, blessed are pure in heart, that God will give you a pure heart. And let me tell you this, God has already given you a pure heart. The imperfections came with us. As I said before, we were made to see God. Here's my inclusio. In the book of Genesis, we were in relationship with God. My Bible says that God played in the dirt as he tapped out the rakia, as he formed and blew in the breath. And God had conversations with the man and with the woman. God was seeing them face to face. And beloved, because of sin, the imperfection, the impurity of sin, it dims our view. But because of faith in Jesus Christ, he's able to clear away those imperfections to allow you to get back to Eden and begin to look and see God face to face and live. So all our prayer is for these leaders, as you go forth and you sacrifice your life, you sacrifice your time, you sacrifice your talent and your commitment, this is my prayer for you and for me that God would open the eyes of our heart that we might be able to see him, that we might be able to see him in our ministry, see him in our family, see him in our work, see him in our obligations. If God ain't in it, you don't need to be anywhere around it. So ask God to open your eyes that you might see God at work and join God in work. Beloved, the doors of the church are open. In the event that there's a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, who never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, I invite you to be able to come right now. Come by letter, Christian experience, or as a candidate for baptism. Will you please stand? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Do you want to see him? Do you want, oh, I want to see you. I want to see you. Everybody say, oh. Open the eyes of my heart. Open Lord. the eyes of my heart. Open Lord. the 
I want to see you. I want to see you. Is that our prayer? One more time. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes. I want to see. Will you make a decision? Accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior. You come by ladder Christian experience, or as a candidate for baptism. To see. of the church are open in the event that there's a man, a woman, a boy, a girl who never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. You're watching out here. You can become a member by emailing us at Bethany at bklyn.org. Member at Bethany, bklyn.org. Will you make that decision? Come on, everybody, can you sing? Open the eyes of my heart. Open. Open the eyes of my heart. That's our prayer. Open the Open eyes of my heart. Eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, will you get that in your spirit? I want to see you. That's our prayer to God. Open the eyes of my heart. Open, open, open. giving it to us abundantly. We thank you for the heart that you have given us, the new heart, the new heart to be able to see you as you are and to see you and others. So God, continue to bless uh, Bethany, this Bethany church, this Bethany nation, this Bethany people, to continue to do your will, to begin to trust you. Oh God, we commend these leaders these deacons, these trustees, these ministers, these ministry leaders who are the face of this church to be able to make a difference in a world that has given up on church and churches, has given up on faith and faithfulness, and given up on God and godliness. Oh God, allow us to be a standard to make a difference and know that it pays to serve you. So continue to bless these leaders. Bless this household of faith, bless our nation. As we continue to struggle through racial upheaval and economic challenges, allow us to be able to be the best person that you have called us to do. May nothing we face cause us to ever waver from our single purpose. That in pure in heart, we might be able to see you comfort those who are mourning, comfort those 
who are grieving. Comfort those who are in the hospital. We thank you, oh God, for answer prayers. We thank you for healing. We thank you for marriages. We thank you for births. We, we thank you for new houses and new cars and new jobs. We thank you for reconciliation and new friendships, oh God. We just don't come to complain. We come to thank you. We thank you for the saving power of your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to die for us, who now make his intercession on behalf of you. In your name we pray. Amen. Holy, 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 I want to see you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. are invited, whether you are rich or poor, black or white, whether you have faith, even if you doubt, you are invited to come to God's table at God's invitation. Come not because you must, but come because you may. Come not because you're strong, but come because you are weak. Come not because you are justified to come, but come because you are justified by faith in his blood. If you're inclined to come to God's table at God's invitation, will you say after me, we accept the invitation. Pastor Pittman, will you lead us in prayer and bless the table? Dear God, it's once more and again that we bow in your presence, thanking you for the word that has been declared in our presence. We thank you, O oh God, for indeed inviting us to this sacred table. We thank you for preparing this table, in, even in the midst of our enemies, preparing us to see you, to see your face. We ask, O God, that indeed as you bless us, that you might change the elements on this table from a natural use to a sacred and spiritual use. Bless us that we walk away, we will know that we have been with you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and say together, amen. Amen. So therefore, beloved, those of you who are in our virtual space, we're asking that you have known that this is our consecration Sunday. I know it's been second Sunday for hundreds of years. And it will be, continue to be second Sunday, just not this second Sunday. The world, the world is not going to fall out. He's not coming today. But we're just doing something today because I believe if we want to be here, we want to be at the table with the officers. You know, healing takes place when we gather around the table. You know, we pay bills when we gather around the table. We figure out how we're going to send the kid to school when we gather around the table. And right now, your leaders have gathered around this table to figure out the direction of this church. We now invite you in your own particular spaces if you might be able to identify a piece of bread that reminds us of his body which was given and any type of red liquid that reminds us of his blood which was shed for the remission of sins. And if you will do it in a central place at a table of fellowship that's designed to know it's something that you will not do alone. We will sing our benedicting hymn, It Is Well, verses 1 and 2. We will take the bread. We'll do verse 3, and then we will drink the wine. And then on verse 4, those of you all here will be able to stand together on our benedicting hymn. We know how we do it, and we do it well. Amen, we do it well. I, 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 we, I said we, we do it well. We do it well because it is well. It is well.
And he gathered in the upper room of a good man's house to be able to redefine the Passover. There was no longer a need for the lamb because he would be the lamb that taketh away the sins of the world. And he took the bread and he broke it and gave it to each one of them and said, Take eat. This is my body, which I am offering for you. Let us eat together. until I drink it anew with you. Drink ye all of it. <laughs> this we will do in remembrance of him. Let us commune together. Go in peace. I love to 